nightmare speaking. It's the perfect Halloween with ghosts and ghouls, or even more frightening than your mother. <laughs> Jeff, wake up. Where's Miriam? She's right here, safe with me. Yeah. A new Goldberg's Halloween, ABC Next. So after waking up with a big headache this morning, it wasn't massive, but it was enough to keep me out of work today because when I was sleeping on this very couch to like warm myself up, it, it got a little worse. So I thought, well, maybe I should stay home. And I didn't sleep all that good last night at all on top of that. So luckily I left, I tried to go back to sleep Two, twice, I think. I took some Advil. They, my grandparents woke me up two different times. First, my grandfather knocked on the door to have me take some Advil, and then I tried to go back to sleep again. I can't remember what the second time was, but I can't even remember. I don't even, I barely remember half of this morning. I only remember that part, but where my grandfather knocked on the door, but I don't remember. I remember my grandmother calling me to come back down after that, but I don't remember. Oh, wait a second. I don't remember that part, but I do remember my mom calling me asking me if I was okay, but I'm better now. I slept and luckily I had enough, I had enough energy and momentum to watch Goldbergs. But like I said, we're not done yet. We, now we have, now after I'm done re uh, recording, editing and uploading this, we have to like, you know, catch up on the Johnny Benson installment of that girl Lele before we go into the Brett Bodine installment tomorrow. And, um, we have to catch up on what, uh, like the last Welcome to Flash episode we skipped, which, I'm actually gonna look right now. So, the last time we were in the Flash universe, it was the Dale Sr. Austin Dillon installment. So tomorrow after work, right before we do the Lele Flash doubleheader, this will be the first time all you'll be watching in real time. Now that we're slowly starting to shift gears to colder weather and season two of Winter Wonderland, um, we're gonna be doing a a, a, a Lele Flatch triple header with with one Lele and two Flatches. Tomorrow we're gonna have to work. We're gonna catch up on the Mike Skinner installment, and then later that night we're gonna go on the regular TV for the first time in the office and studio that needs to be cleaned up and reorganized to watch the Johnny Benson installment of Lele and the Terry Labonte installment of Flatch. So we're all set like Jimmy Johnson tonight. We're gonna be catching up on the I think is um yeah the Johnny Benson installment of um. Is it Benson? Did I say that the first time? I, oh yeah, I, got, I don't feel like looking. I think it, I think it is the Johnny Benson installment of of Lele tomorrow. While the one we're gonna catch up on is the Bill Elliott installment. I, I you know what? Fuck it, I'll check. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I thought. The last Lely episode we watched was the Bill Elliott installment. This one's going to be the Johnny Benson installment we're going to do here in a few minutes. And tomorrow will be Brett Bodine. And speaking of that girl, Lele, add a boy to Sean Philip Glasgow for um, doing a hell of a job in what was a banger Halloween episode of Goldbergs for the Mark Martin installment as Fitz. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, Fitz is a way nicer than Lugnut will ever be, despite Lugnut, you know, you know, Basically kind of doing the right thing, turning from an enemy to a frenemy by stabbing, you know, fictional Graydon, better known as Graydon Wade and that fucking dipshit in the back and, you know, not having no more of a shit. But that's a conversation we're going to save for like in a few minutes and also tomorrow night. But anyway, so let's go over the Mark Martin installment of Goldberg, which was the Halloween episode. So therefore, it all started, you know, with, um, you know, Beverly, you know, being an overzealous grandmother and hogging Muriel from her, her her his his her own dad you know her you know which is you know Beverly's son-in-law because of the fact he married her daughter Erica so therefore Jeff was a man on a mission to get away you know and forcing Erica to get away with them with the baby and this one this one looked like everything was going according to plan you know they, they forgot the diaper cream which you know he was he, he was on the ball with everything except for that he was on the ball with everything except for that and so, I don't know, if the ice cream truck was in the nightmare, which I'm going to get to momentarily, then how did Beverly get there? Maybe she did drive it in real life, but the thing is, that nightmare was creep. Not as creepy as the uh, nightmare sequences from Ultraviolet and Black Scorpion last week, which I think that one was the Ty Dillon installment. Yeah, 13. But this one was a little creepy, but not as much as the one we saw Ultraviolet last week. But the fact that, you know... 
I knew the ice cream truck was Beverly and I thought it was reality for a second. And so Beverly was turning into a demon. And so Jeff ran with the little, little bassinet back into the little getaway beach room, like the beach motel or something like that. I don't know what the hell those things are called. But when she thought he was safe with the baby, uh, he was, she wasn't in the bassinet and, and the, the demon Beverly from the nightmare got out of hold of her. And the, Erica was waking him up like, Jeff, wake up. It's okay. It was just, you just had a nightmare. None of this is real. And then the real Beverly showed up with the baby. And luckily came, eventually as overzealous as she's always been, even before I came to the Goldberg universe, she's finally, every time she overzealous, I, I, I give, I'm going to give Beverly the benefit of the doubt. She may drive us, us younger fans crazy that have not been with the Goldbergs much, or even even long time or lifetime fans, you know, how overzealous she can be with her kids and now with her grandkids. But at least when she's overzealous, she eventually comes to her senses. She does it every time. So props to Wendy McClendon, Covey slash, you know, the, the on screen TV version of the real Beverly Goldberg. So she came to her senses about, um, you know, Muriel and how Jeff could do a, a best job. You know, you're going to screw up as a parent, but that's OK. I mean, it's part of parenting. It's that's what life is all about, you know, and then. She let her, she let him hold her and look at that. It all worked out just fine. Now for the opposite end where Sean Phillip Glasgow was part of with, you know, um, Adam and Dave Kim. So therefore, now first of all, Adam Dutton Mill missing the memo with the costume theme was hilarious. And when him doing the Jeff Hammond with how big that co the Ninja Turtle costume was was even funnier. But at least they let it go saying, it's okay, you misunderstood. Just come join us anyway. So we got to see Dave Kim for the first time since he took off to college, considering, you know, Adam's holding, it was as we confirmed this season, Adam's holding himself back for a year because of the passing of his dad and whatnot, even though the reaction in real life, the actor got fired. So, um, yeah, so the hook, Dave Kim was really nice enough to show him what he's doing with his current life in college. That's where we met Fitz, you know, for you know, the, you know, Sean Phillip Glasgow who plays Lugnut, but and Fitz is way nicer than Lugnut. Way nicer. I mean, trust me. Even though he's not great, he doesn't, you know, he's not on great, great inside anymore over in that universe. But, um, but, you know, um, it was all working out just fine. It was actually, go well, not working out, but it was going perfectly then for the beginning until, you know, you know, Adam made a snide comment when they got to the dance floor. It looked like they were going to have it to themselves. Now I'm going to get to what happened, what, why Dave Kim got so upset and, you know, in, in, a, in, a in a moment, but you know, with that DK and Y having that dance floor to themselves in that moment, I knew it was going to get crowded, but it was cool to see them have it to themselves. It reminded me of when, when I lived in Mexico in the 2001, 2002 season, when I was seven, eight years old, there was like a, like a big mall slash museum and, and museum, both, both called title, both Castellas de las Lomas. I think they were the next door to each other, across the street from each other. This was in like two decades ago so I don't remember it's so far back I don't fucking remember but we went to the museum in the middle of the day one day and we went to the mall in the middle of the night one time now, I don't mean like overnight like 1am maybe we did 1am who knows Some in my childhood we used to, me and my family used to go out to places at the most random times whenever we felt like it which was not a common occurrence the, unfortunately but now that we're all I'm older we don't do that kind of we don't, we don't do that kind of stuff no more but when I remember we went to the museum, me and my mom and my dad and my sister did, and I do remember downstairs we did karaoke, where we did, where I did live in La Vida Loca, but of course they had it in Spanish because it was a Spanish-speaking country, and I was mumbling the words at the time because I did not have the Spanish version of that song memorized like I do now. But, yeah, but, cause I, that was like my third year, like Enrique Martin. He still had a little bit of that 1999 popularity, but that wasn't all. That's not the really point of this. So eventually when my mom and sister split up to go on their own thing, my dad took me and it took me, just me and him by ourselves to go up to a dance floor at the very top of the, uh, of top floor in the back of the building. It was so dark in there that the only thing was lighting it up was the colorful lights on the dance floor and in the ceiling, the, you know, the, the lights and everything. And he only took me up there so I could dance to the real living span living La Vida Loca by you know dance to Ricky or just Ricky Martin in general. And of course, since it was a Spanish speaking country, they did not have the English version that everybody knows. They only had the Spanish version. So yeah, 
And that, and the whole point of that, that you know, DK and Y having the dance floor to themselves reminded me of this moment. Because when I, when my dad took me up there to that same dance floor, Boscas de las Lomas, to the Insta Ricky Martin, I had that whole dance floor to myself. Nobody else came up there. It was just me and him. I was dancing on by myself on the dance floor, and he was just standing there, sitting or I think there was a bench there. We could barely see it unless there was light enough with the the the, the colors for the lights. He, I think he just sat there watching, and he didn't. We didn't. He, back then, we didn't. In 2001, 2002, we didn't have this kind of modern technology. So, therefore, he just had a regular flip phone to the point where he couldn't record me. And plus, there was no social media back in 01 and 02. So, therefore, there was nothing to record or put on the interwebs like there would be now if this happened today. But, yeah, that's what it reminded me of. And then, of course, Adam made that snide comment. And one of, you know, Fitz's partners said, hey, dude, that's not cool. And, of course, Dave Kim stormed off and got upset, uh, ang uh, like in an anger, angrily manner, and rightfully so. But it didn't take them long to, like, take them um, long to, like, come together and work it out, saying, you know, I don't care if I'm in college or, for the, or, or what I do the rest of my life or if I never see you again. This is what Dave Kim said. I don't care if I'm in college right now and you're not. Or no matter if I see you again, the rest, or if I don't see you again at a later time in my life, you're always going to be my friend. Once you're here next year, which I hope that we get to see that if Goldberg gets a Brett Bodine season 11, that, you know, Dave Kim said, once you're here next year, which I think we have to be season 11 for that to happen, we're going to have the time of our lives. And guess what? They went back to the dance floor all in costume and they were dancing up a storm and having a hell of a time. So therefore, see... Even in these holiday episodes, these like comedy th show themes of you know have you know having all these all these all these issues you know you know all these issues that are frustrating people and then trying to look for a way to resolve it themselves they get the upper hand in the middle and then it all goes to shit in the set in the later part of the middle but in the end they all come to that cut together with their senses and talk it out and war and work things out like real men and women should do so yeah so. Again, this episode proved, uh, like, proved it again. But then I, I'll leave, I'll end this video by saying that this episode goes to show that change, no matter how scary change is and how much it upsets people, I mean, no matter, in the, in the end, it all works out like always. And then we live a successful life, you know, when it comes to have, go changing life phases. So we did this in 19, in the 19, I mean, I did, we, I, but for me, I did it in, after Christmas, 1999, when I moved to Michigan, in the Lenore house, I did it. And we were away from family, but look at that. I discovered smooth jazz. I became a NASCAR fan. Look at that. And then when we finally came back to Ohio and go to Sandhurst, uh, we left behind all my buddies at Michigan that I'm probably never going to see again, except for rare occasion when I go there to have, to have time to visit. You know, like all the years we went to M me and my dad went to MIS to visit Lenore. See our now grown childhood friends or when my mom took me to Berger to the last time to see that old building before they tore it down. Like a week, a week after I graduated Polaris, you know, a couple of weeks before I went to MIS and before the Spurs won their fifth championship where I got to see my old friends at Berger at 20 years old and dancing and dance to Ricky Martin for them and get, you know, teach them the 107 through the wave jingle, you know, like that, you know, that's like a rare occasion. Or when we move from Brook Park to Sandhurst to here, to here, to Ridgeville, then, um, you know, it was, it was tough at first leaving the people, the, the people that were good to us. But look at that. Ever since then, it's all worked out. We've met a lot. We've made a lot more, more and more and more friends here than ever before. More than we did on Sanders, more than we did on Lenore. We've met a lot of our like best friends that we, uh, we, that we, uh, that we do stuff and talk with and talk to today. You know, we've surrounded ourselves with better people, most especially in the neighborhood where they've invited us to do stuff with them and their families and their friend group. I mean, does it get any better than that? So that's what it's all about. It's going to be the same thing if we, if I ever have to leave here. But like, if I, like, staying in Ridgeville is not going to count because this is going to be the same song and dance in like a different part of, of the city. But if I ever have to completely move out, like a, like either a different part of Ohio, like a different city and county, or if I have to move out of state, that's exactly what's going to happen. Eventually, I know, I, mean, I can I can hope not, but if it has to come to that, eventually the time here has to come to an end. Just 
right for the time being, not right now. We're, we're trying our best. But anyway, I'm going to end this video right there. And we're not done yet because we got, like I said, we're going to catch up on the Johnny Benson installment of that girl Lele on the DVR. My dumbass forgot to record it last Thursday. So I looked for a time they were replaying it. And they replayed it on, a, on Monday. Yes. Yeah. Was it? Um. Monday, the second to last warm day of the year. So, therefore, um, I recorded it then. That's what we're going to watch right now. So, I'll catch you all in a little while when we do the reaction video for that.